Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at the Lelantis protocol from Zcoin and why it's just a huge step forward for blockchain privacy. So we'll start off with a view of the privacy coin ecosystem. So here's a table from CryptoSlate showing the top 10 by market cap. The first thing to appreciate here is that all of these use just a handful of underlying technologies. So a good example is Dandelion. Dandelion was actually developed for Bitcoin back in 2017 as a way to hide the IP address. Since then, there have been a lot of you know, vulnerabilities found and then new versions of Dandelion and then forks of the Dandelion protocol and all kinds of different things. But basically today, we've got Monero, Zcoin, Beam, PivX, and Grin all using some version of Dandelion. And it's the same thing with a lot of other technologies, okay? The second thing to realize is that many of these coins are actually just forks of other coins. So if we include forks, six of these top 10 are actually forks of just Zcash and Zcoin. All right. So then you say, what do we have left? Well, there's Monero, there's Verge, where privacy is really just an add on feature, right? So it's kind of weak privacy. And then the Mimblewimble coins beam and grin and again scalability is the focus of mimblewimble you know there's some privacy but it is comparatively weak privacy so when we talk about strong privacy coins really we're talking about three things and that is monero zcoin so let's take a closer look monero of course dominates the market cap all right Monero started basically when a group of miners convinced the BitMonero community to abandon their leader and throw in with this new project called Monero. And ever since then, all the development has been donations funded. So we say it's very community driven. And because of this, if you think about it, it's difficult to get a big donation to have a completely new privacy protocol. It's easier to get small donations to improve on what you already have. So because of this, the Monero ecosystem has always kind of favored incremental upgrades. And actually today, if you have enough data and enough computing power, it is still possible to get some information out of the Monero graph. And we'll see how in just a second. So Zcoin and Zcash, by contrast, um, come out of academia. Actually, Johns Hopkins University um, in partnership with some folks in Israel. So Zcoin was the first to launch and it was launched by a master's student at Johns Hopkins University. So it's born out of academia and it was launched with a big distrust of trusted setup. So when the zero coin and zero cash protocols were dreamed up, they both required this trusted setup. The founder of Zcoin found a workaround using RSA factoring, all right? But that resulted in quite a slow and kind of large transaction size. And so Zcoin at that time was comparatively slow and large. Zcash, on the other hand, different project, they had a business plan from day one. So for them, they really wanted to integrate with the legacy financial systems. So network speed, was of big importance. So they embraced the trusted setup, and as a result, they had a faster network speed from day one. With the release of Lelantis, now Zcoin is gonna have the same speed and size and scalability as Zcash, but without that trusted setup. And unlike Monero, these Zcoin transactions are truly impossible to unwind. So we'll take a closer look now and see how. Here is the basic method of achieving anonymity on a blockchain, which is basically to use a different address for each transaction or like a one time use address. OK, so here Bob is using two different addresses so that when he pays Carol, Alice doesn't know about it. The problem, of course, is that if Bob needs to spend both of these outputs at the same time, then there will be a link from Bob to Carol. So the way that Monero deals with this is with a ring signature. So Bob combines his inputs with a group of decoy inputs so that 
you know, Carol is not sure which input is actually his. And Alice is not really sure who is paying Carol, if it's Bob or if it's someone else. So we're going to think about Bob's anonymity set. So if it's not Bob, the who could it be? Who's paying Carol from Alice's perspective, right? So how many different people could be paying Carol? So the first limiting factor is the size of the ring, right? So Monero sets their minimum ring size to 11. So that means Bob is one out of 11. So his anonymity set is 11. The second thing to consider is how vigilant he is about not linking his different addresses. So here we saw that if Bob uses both outputs to pay Carol, these addresses can get linked. And if there's enough of these, a neural net, you know, or like, a, like an AI can basically start to identify patterns and figure out which accounts are being controlled by a common person. And there's lots of different ways to do that, okay? So second thing, again, is how careful he is about linking. The third thing is the quality of the decoys. Let's say one of these decoys is from 2017. Well, it's very unlikely that an output from 2017 is going to be spent today, right? So if Bob had 11 people in his ring signatures, and we can rule out that one, now his anonymity set is down to 10. So this is how Monero works in terms of anonymity, and we see what the limitations of this are. The zero coin protocol, which was first described in 2013, increased the anonymity set from the size of the ring signature to all of the private transactions of some denomination. Okay, so let's take a look. So Bob basically deposits his real coins into the zero coin pool. And then he can spend out of that pool using a secret serial number and a zero knowledge proof. So his proof basically says the serial number that Carol is receiving represents one coin that was deposited to this pool, which has not yet been spent. Okay, pretty straightforward. So um, now with a system like this, again, it's important that this is all the same denomination. So we need different pools for different denomination, right? So when Kira receives the coin, there's no information in that coin about its value. The way that the blockchain knows how much money Carol gets is which pool it comes from. Okay, so that'll be important later. But remember that the value here is encoded in which pool it's coming from. All right, now there is another weakness here. Um, so we've got anonymity set limited to total transactions of some denomination but also it's possible to do timing and pattern attacks. So let's say that Bob is gonna send Carol 21 Z coin, right? So then we'll see a transaction depositing two tens and a one at the same time, and then another transaction spending two tens and a one. So, you know, it's pretty likely that you could identify Bob and Carol in this situation. So this is what Z coin has looked like from the beginning. And there was an update in 2019 with Sigma, uh, which got rid of the trusted setup entirely. So it no longer needs to use RSA. Now there's just no trusted setup. And it also reduced the size of the proofs. This is what Zcoin looks like today. Okay, so Zcoin today runs the Sigma protocol. What we'd really like is a system like that, but with shielded amounts. Okay, so these systems also allow for private transfers. So here, Alice disappears entirely from the blockchain. And it also gives extra privacy to Bob and Dave because uh, now their anonymity set is all shielded transactions, not only one denomination, right? So this is how ZK snarks work in Zcash or Zocrates or any of the you know, ZKP systems that are popular today. And this is how Lelantis will work when it goes live on Zcoin in September of 2020, okay? So in September of this year, Zcoin is gonna look like this. Now, the difference between how these two protocols work between Atlantis and ZK Snarks 
has to do with proving the amount. So let's take a closer look and see exactly how that works in all these different scenarios. In Monero, the inputs and outputs are ultimately linked back to the original mining rewards. So Monero uses something called confidential transactions, which I've uh, shown down here. And this is another one of those technologies that's used by so many different private coins, okay? Monero combines confidential technologies with ring signatures. So they, they use this word ring CT, but really it's just two protocols combined together. So under confidential transactions, I don't write the amount on the blockchain. I write this encrypted value instead. And this value I'm not able to read, so I can't figure out how much Bob is sending to Carol, but I can confirm that the inputs are equal to the outputs. And that's just cryptography, all right? So the cryptography is capable of adding these values just like we can do arithmetic. So in this way, the ultimate value is linked back to the original mining reward. So in this type of system and any confidential transactions system, you also need a range proof, which is gonna prove that these numbers are greater than zero. Otherwise you could create new coins. And Monero uses these special, really optimized high speed range proofs called bullet proofs. So when you hear people talking about Monero, often they're gonna mention ring CT and bullet proofs. So that's what it is. In Zcash or any of these protocols utilizing ZK snarks, we first send the details of our transaction to a trusted proof generator. And this is gonna send us back a ZK snark. When it's time to spend, we show that snark along with our revealed serial number back to the prover. And the prover just tells us yes, it's valid, or no, it's not valid, right? And in this case, the amount is hidden behind the snark, right? And the process of making sure the transaction balances is back to a simple yes or no. So whereas in Monero, it was actually some kind of arithmetic backed up to the original mining rewards, here all the information is disconnected and I'm just giving you a yes or a no. However, we do need this trusted proof generator. And this is where some people get uneasy, right? If someone knew the parameters that were input when this was set up, they could just issue a thumbs up to any serial number that came in, right? They would be able to approve any spend transaction. The Lantis from the start is building on Sigma. Remember, Sigma's big deal was no trusted setup. So that's where we're gonna start, no trusted setup. So the Lantis had to do two major things in order to make this system work. First of all, we extend confidential transactions to add this serial number. So remember with the zero, zero coin and zero cash systems, we have a secret serial number that lets us spend from that big pool. Well, the serial number is gonna be put inside of this blinded commitment. So with Monero and these other confidential transaction systems, we have a single blinded commitment with the value. Now we have a double blinded commitment, the value and the serial number. Because of this, we need to develop a new balance proof, a new way for our fancy cryptography to verify that the outputs are correct. And we also need to update bullet proofs, right? Remember that we have to prove that these are non-negative numbers, so we need a range proof, and Monero uses bullet proofs to make it nice and quick. So the authors of the Lantis, that's the first major thing that they've done, right? They've written this new balance proof to account for the double blind commitment, and they've updated bullet proofs so that it can still do a lightning fast um, proof. The second thing that they had to do, now for Bob to send a shielded input to Carol, Carol has to be able to see and spend that output. Bob has to be able to create it, create the shielded output, but not have permission to spend it. So that was the second difficult thing that Lelantis was able to do, okay? So Lelantis lets Bob create a shielded output, 
which is cryptographically linked to Carol's address so that she can read it and only she can spend it. And with these two pieces together, Lelantis enables the Zcoin to Zcoin private transactions that are fully anonymous, so we don't know who they're coming from, and fully confidential. We can't see the amount. And those two together mean they are fully private. So how does this stack up to the others, to Monero and Zcash? Well, like Monero, we are using a trustless setup. And despite being new and quite innovative, this is actually using proven cryptography. All right, so these concepts have been around for decades already. Like Zcash, this system has a potentially huge anonymity set. Remember in Monero, we were limited to the size of our ring, but here we're taking the group approach. So we're limited by the size of the pool. So Zcoin, Zcoin is gonna set this at 65,000 to begin with, just to keep the system lean, but this could be changed in the future. Now, furthermore, in the real world, anonymity set is affected by lots of other things, of course. And a big one is how many people choose to use shielded transactions versus transparent transactions, right? If you look at the Zcash network today, something like 90% or over 90% of transactions are transparent. So that means that they're not contributing to your anonymity set. So your anonymity set is not growing as quickly as it would otherwise. In Zcoin, under Lelantis, transactions will be private by default. So you'll still have the ability to opt out of privacy, which is a first for any cryptocurrency, by the way. But by default, everyone is going to be contributing to that giant anonymity set. And that's Lelantis. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like this video and share it with your friends. And if you want to stay posted, Follow us on Twitter at ZCoin Official or visit our website at ZCoin.io.